What's going on lunatics? Welcome back to the bait laboratory. I'm coming at you with another tackle making video. In today's video, we're doing it a little bit different. I had some old um, plastics from when I very, very first started pouring again and I messed them up. And um, But the colors that I messed up are good solid colors. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to dilute those those bad pores that you might have put too much color in, too much flake, how you can kind of dilute that out and still use those baits so you don't have to throw them away. And these are actually gonna go to a customer as well, so I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone is I'm able to reuse some of these old plastics that I messed up in the past, yet hit the nail on the head with a clear water color that the customer wanted me to choose the color for them. They said, hey, I trust your judgment. Get me a clear water color that I can fish in about 20 foot of water. So we're gonna go for like a watermelon, kind of purple glitter with a little bit of black flake. And um, I think you're really gonna enjoy the color. I, I, think, it, I think it's gonna turn out really, really well. Um, I've kind of done this with some of these bad pours in the past, so I have an idea of what this color is going to look like. So I'm pretty confident that's going to work out and work perfectly for what the customer wants. So stay tuned, watch me make these, and watch how you can reuse these old pours, bad pours, and what you can do if you go to the tackle shop and you see that dollar bin or something super cheap in there, and you're like, man, I don't really like that bait, but that's a really cool color, buy it melt it down and make it into something that you want. So stay tuned, let's get into making these baits. And if I have anything extra, I will put it up on the website because I have a feeling I'm gonna have some extra plastic. And um, if you like this color, check it out on the website and get some for yourself. Okay, so as you can see, I've already started getting this plastic all ready to go. But all I did is I took some old Ned worms that I made way too thick with colorant and um, saved them because I knew that there was a ton of color in them and I could just use them and add them almost like you would typical colorant. So as you can see in here, there's just, they're starting to melt down inside that Plastisol. This was almost two cups of like brand new Plastisol and there is seven of these Ned worms in there to give it to some color. And um, so if you, if you mess up sometimes, don't worry about it. You can a lot of times save that old plastisol or those old baits that you messed up on maybe you added way too much color too much flake but you can always kind of dilute it and just remelt that down with some new plastisol and um, get something that you like and it's no different than almost like buying something at the bargain bin at the store maybe it's a bait that you don't normally throw but it's the right color you could always buy those baits and then melt them down into something else because you know sometimes you're getting those baits for a dollar or so and um, all you got to do is just melt them down and you got something brand new that you can use so we're going to keep working on this and get it to the right color but um eventually we'll start pouring up these el gaisano worms and uh Hopefully they turn out really, really good. We might have to add some colorant in there or maybe add a couple more of these guys. So we'll have to just see. So you're gonna hear the microwave going on in the background and that's because I'm working on something else while I'm filming this video. But um, I'm liking this green so far. It's a nice, real vibrant watermelon with some real small purple flake and a little bit of black flake in there as well. But I think I'm gonna add another, another one of these and I'm gonna pull down my old messed up bait bin and get another one of those i made a bunch of these back when i first started pouring and i messed up a bunch of them so i'm going to add in two more so that's a total of i want to say 11 of those into two cups of plastisol and um, after that we should have a real nice good watermelon color and uh we'll pour up some of these el gaisano worms in the six inch size and uh, we'll have some great clear water baits. Okay, so we're still working on our colorant, but we still need to melt down some of those old Ned worms. As you can see, there's a couple of them still in there that need to be melted down, but we're definitely getting a greener look and a little bit thicker color to it, which is what I want. I didn't want it to be too thin and too see-through. Um, I do want it to have a little bit of a, um, transparency to it so you can see the flake in it because these are real small flakes that are in there but we definitely need to keep heating this up and melting down some of those old baits in there and uh, we should be able to pour here in just a second you guys can see what these final look to these worms is going to be 
And um, I know there's gonna be fish catchers. I mean, you can't go wrong with the watermelon with a little bit of purple and a little bit of black flake in there. It's just a staple, staple clear water color. Okay, so here's a better look at our six inch El Gaisano mold. You can do laminates with this one. You gotta be a little bit careful, but I have been successful doing laminates with this mold. This is a really good worm. It has a real flat bottom to it uh, at the tail, which I really think helps kind of give it a little bit better action and kind of float a little bit better. Real good finesse worm. I've caught a bunch of fish on it, especially on a shaky head, but you could drop shot this Texas rig it. You could do a lot of different things with it. So I apologize for the mess that's on the table here, but um, I was doing some other um, baits before filling, filming this video, but uh, normally I don't like to film with so much um, so much of a mess on the table, but you know, it is what it is. And I had a bunch of plastics to make today. So I wanted to film as much as of it as I could as fast as possible. Cause I got some other stuff that I want to do today as well. But so far I'm really liking that green. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our single injector this time. This is just a dual mold single injector. Um, the nice thing about the dual injector that you can buy from dual molds is you can take it apart and use them as single injectors. So that's what we're going to do right now. We got our mold set up with our clamps on it. So we're going to draw up that plastisol and go over to our mold. And this plastisol is pretty hot. So um, I got to be pretty careful about not uh, pushing too hard because then you could really force it into getting some flashing to go and then it basically ruins your, your baits. So um, it doesn't take a lot of plastic to fill up this mold. And um, I got to make 24 of these, so I got quite a few... Um, um, processes to go through but I think these baits are going to turn out pretty good and if I got a bunch extra at the end of it I'll put them up on the website so what we're going to do is we're going to top off the sprue here put the extra back in our cup I'm going to put the cup back in so it stays warm and I like to do that because I really think it helps to alleviate some of the um, amount of uh, reheats that you have to do because usually you can get a couple of pours as long as you keep it in the microwave like that and then you don't have to worry about scorching everything as much or anything like that so uh, that's something that i found helpful was to leave the plastic in the microwave not with it on just to keep that that heat in there to keep that plastisol warm and get a, at least one or two pours out of one one reheat okay so i think our worms are ready to go we already got the clamps off so we're going to take our knife and just kind of pry everything open a little bit check out our worms and yeah i really like this color it's a real subtle nice clear water watermelon type of a color this is really really cool i really like this i would definitely fish this myself and i'm really happy with how these worms turned out okay so we're ready for round number two plastisol is still real nice and hot we we'll draw it up good flow come into the mold even pressure down and it's already full so i'm just going to hold that pressure and i don't even think i'm going to reheat this plastic again and then i'll get three pours out of one reheat which is really good for the longevity of your color longevity of just the whole process so that way you don't scorch anything and uh we'll check these out i'm really happy with how this color turned out though so i want to show you guys one thing when you're making your plastics is one great way to check to see if your plastisol or your worms or whatever you're making to set up is to just keep your glove on and just tap the top of the sprue right here because once that kind of solidifies and it's not gooey and it doesn't stick to your glove anymore that's usually a good sign that um your worms or your baits are ready to go and you can open them up and, and take them out and put them into the bath or on the towel or whatever you end up using but you want to make sure that it's dry it doesn't stick anymore and it almost feels like it's it's completely cured and then you know it's time to take your baits out. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna open up the mold, take out round number two, and they should turn have turned out nicely, which they did. So we got six now of our 24 that we need. I probably should get more of these molds just to make this process go faster, but when you only got one, you can only make three at a time. It is what it is. So we're gonna keep at it and keep getting these out i'm not gonna make you guys sit through all 24 of them um i'll probably do another one or two of these on camera and then i'll show you guys the final product with a little bit better picture better light all that kind of stuff okay so round number three injector goes in draw that plastisol up 
and I can definitely tell that it has thickened compared to the last two pours, so I will probably heat everything back up after this one, but it's nice to be able to get that many pours out of one reheat. It might have been a little bit on the hot side to start off with the first ones. It didn't damage anything. They still turned out really good, but um, not having to heat the plastis all up over and over again is really beneficial to you, to you over the long haul, especially when you have a bunch of these to make, and I just dropped the injector whatever that front part is the spout into my cup so i'm gonna have to dig that thing out so unfortunately that is a hazard when these things come off and they go into your cup it's not the end of the world it's definitely an inconvenience but you can easily scoop it out with the knife or whatever you're using to stir everything up and get that thing out but do not try to take the plastic off when it is in this situation when it's still all liquefied and everything you got to just wait till it cools down you can pull it off and it's no big deal and you can get back to pouring a little bit of an inconvenience but it is what it is and i just figured i'd show you since it happened on camera and just show you the whole process of getting it off or getting it out and, and all that so as soon as this um solidifies i'll just show you that it's easy to take it all off and you can get back at it Okay, so the same process can be done, like I just explained, with checking to see if your plastic's ready to come out of your mold by just ch touching everything. You can just touch the top of this to see how sticky it is, and if it wasn't ready yet, you definitely just see that plastic stick to your fingertip. But basically, all you got to do is just pull this plastic off, just like you would the top of the the injector normally, without it falling into your cup, and then you just pull everything out. And uh, sometimes this part's a little bit. A little bit tricky when getting it out of the actual little hole that it comes out of when you're injecting everything and you kind of have to wait sometimes to for that to solidify a little bit more which i need to at this point but i like to take just a pair of little like needle nose pliers and stick it in there and when it's cooled down enough it'll just come right out all right so what we're going to do right now is take our clamps off check out these baits I, don't, I anticipate these turned out just fine. Usually it's hard to mess up your baits when you're using single injectors because you don't have any other colors to contend with. But yeah, these turned out pretty good. And uh, I'm going to take the sprue off, put it in my bath, which is just water inside of a plastic bin. But it helps to keep everything straight. And as you can see, they're floating in there. Okay, so we're ready to make some more. This is going to be the last one that I do on camera. But we're just going to take our injector, put it in, suck up the plastic, come over to our mold, inject the plastic in. This is pretty hot, so once again, I'm not going to have to uh, do a bunch of reheats. But you got to make sure that if you try to do that, you don't overheat it in order to try to keep it hot for longer. Because if you overheat it, then you're going to have the same issue. Just I've found that the least amount of reheats as possible, the better. Um, but... You know, you might have to try it for yourself and just see what works best for you. But yeah, this is pretty hot. And uh, we'll just set it back in the microwave so it stays warm in there. And then we'll check these ones out. And then I'm going to finish up this order and I'll show you guys the final product. All right, so it's time to open up our mold. Check out this last run of baits that I'm going to do on camera. So after I put these in the bath, the next scene that you're going to see is the um, final product. I'm going to try to get them in the... In the light so either in my light box or out in the sun itself and just show you guys what these look like a little bit better and um so i'll see you guys in a few minutes and uh hopefully you guys like these because i think i'm gonna have some extra plastic and uh we'll put some of these up on the website and if you guys like them want to get some check out my website mattlinfishing.com and go to the shop where you can shop and uh see if there's anything left so there we have it. We got all of our six inch Elgai sauna worms inside the bath curing. I'm going to take them out and count them to make sure I got 24, which is what I need. But I also have all of this plastic left over. So I'm definitely going to be making some of these and putting them up on the website. Awesome clear watercolor. I'm going to take a few of these out into the sun and show you guys what they look like to get a better idea of it. And if you're going to, if you're going to want to get any of these, make sure to check them out on the website, mattlunafishing.com. All right, so here's our final product. Here's our El Gaisano worms. Really nice green color. It's a vibrant green yet translucent. 
and you can definitely see the that small purple glitter in there kind of shining and you also have that black flake in there as well really really cool worms i really think these are a great clear water color the customer was wanting 20 foot um, clear water type color and i definitely think i hit it on the head right here with this worm i think these clear water bass that he's going after are definitely going to eat it and uh, I think they're gonna be happy with them. I know that I would, I would fish them and I, know, and I know that I would catch fish on this worm. Well, Lunatics, thank you for watching today's video. That's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching me make these baits. I hope you learned something. I hope it was something that you can use in your own bait making or if you just enjoyed watching me put these baits together. And um, pretty cool color. I really like the color. That green turned out really, really well. Um, like I said in the beginning, I did have an idea of what it was gonna turn out like because I've done it in the past, but that's a great clear water color. Definitely gonna catch fish. And I know that I'm gonna have probably between three to six packs of these baits available on the website because I got almost a full cup of sprues and everything that I'm gonna remelt down and make them into baits and offer them out to you guys. So if you enjoyed that color, like that color, want to fish it for yourself, make sure to check out the website, matlunafishing.com, and get some for yourself if there's any left. I have a feeling they're going to go pretty quick, so make sure to go over there pretty quick and get some for yourself if you want them. Probably going to be around five bucks a pack, and they're going to be um, nine to a pack. So check them out, and um, hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, if you have any color suggestions, make sure to comment those down below. If you like the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and... Um, if you share this video out, tag me in that share so that way I can share that. You guys are watching my video so we can hopefully grow this thing and um, get some more people watching these videos. So again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Later.